So I'm going to be upgrading a Meshtastic node that I currently have installed at my parents' house. I'm using the word install pretty loosely right now. It's just a stock board plugged into an outlet uh, sitting on a ceiling joist in the garage. So I'm really planning to um, upgrade that node in general to use a better board than what's currently deployed out there. Um, but today I'm mainly focusing on the antenna. So right now it just has a stock antenna that comes with the radio. It's probably not even tuned properly for this region. So it should be something in, um, well, they always say like 915 megahertz. That's right in the center of the band. Uh, but I think the one on there might actually be tuned for uh, the European frequencies. So anyway, I'm going to replace it with a nice, I think it's 5 or 5.8-ish DBI antenna. Uh, so that's currently waiting at my parents' house. But um, I took this little 3 DBI antenna because I really wanted to show off this cheap mount that I got here. So looking for antenna mounts for a fiberglass or plastic antenna like this, you can spend easily like 60 or 70 bucks just on the mount. So this one was on Amazon for $9 shipped. And uh, you can see easily here, it's, it's really just a piece of angled metal. It feels like some sort of steel. Um, not sure how well this would uh, keep up with the elements or anything. I'm sure it's not your top quality metal for $9. But this feels really sturdy. It's pretty robust. You can see the uh, the clamping mechanism here. So it's just a bunch of these sort of um, these U-shaped pieces. And then these little brackets have teeth in them that sort of grip to the base of the antenna. So typically with a mount like this, you would actually see this part attached to some sort of pole, whether that be metal or fiberglass, probably not so much those these days. Uh, I believe I see a lot of them with PVC. Um, so pretend instead that this is your mounting pole and then you have this piece exposed. And then here's a bracket that actually came with one of um, the antennas I have. So you use this sort of clamping mechanism here for the antenna and then you pop that on there. And then this is just a pole. But I'm gonna do it this way, cause why not? Um, these teeth probably do eat into the metal a bit, but this is just, this is external anyway. I'm sure this is ground if it's even um, connected to anything, probably because it looks like it has continuity here. So I'm not really too worried about it. Um, and as I said, I'm installing this in my parents' garage on a ceiling joist. I don't feel like doing the whole outdoor thing yet. Uh, I don't wanna uh, break out my big SDS drill and get up on a bunch of ladders and worry about bonding in case of lightning and stuff like that. So for now, I'm gonna get over there I'm going to stick this vertical on one of the joists, pop in the new antenna, and take a look and see how it behaves. So that's the plan as of right now. Um, one thing to note, so this did come with its own little hardware here, as though you were going to mount it in drywall. So you got these little flimsy screws. Uh, the one thing, I, I would say these screws are probably fine for the weight of the antenna. This, I mean, you're, you really don't have a lot of weight going on here. But what I'm going to end up doing is just using these screws here. So I buy these big, uh, what is it, 70 piece collections of these drywall anchors. And these screws in here are really good, just general purpose screws. They have the point at the end. They're fine for drilling into wood. So you don't have to just use these for anchoring. And what I found is that these are very durable. They hold up to what I'm trying to do. And these cheapy screws here, sure, they'll take the load, but the heads of these just strip so easily. So these are pretty much just garbage. Um, but yeah, you probably want to use proper screws that are maybe a little bit more robust for this application. 
these are totally fine for the load that we're putting on there. There's not going to be any wind or anything. So, yeah, going with those for now. Okay, so surprise, we're back here again. I took everything over to my parents' house with the intent to install this antenna. Uh, but when I actually took it out of the packaging there, I hadn't seen it yet. The, uh, the end connector down here was all full of rust. Um, it didn't really look like anything within the connector itself was rusty. There was a little bit of corrosion, but there was just a ton of caked in rust. I, I think what had happened is that this was sitting somewhere like this um, in standing water or something, and it just accumulated rust from something else. But I cleaned it up pretty good with some, uh, some white vinegar, let that sit for 24 hours, and then I took a can of Deoxit F5 and um, put that on a Q-tip and then sort of swirled it in here. So the vinegar did the bulk of the actual rust removal. The Deoxit F5, so the F5, that's uh, fader lube, that's plastic safe. You probably can't see it in here, but there's a little, I think it's like a rubber gasket or a plastic gasket or something. Uh, I didn't want the standard Deoxit D5 to destroy that in any way. So I just did a little bit of F5 to take off any last bit of corrosion, but also it, it does have some sort of protection quality which is good to keep the rust from coming back. Um, that's something to keep in mind. I, I've seen it before when you do a rust removal with something like vinegar, you'll get a little bit of rust that comes back. It's, it's hard to keep that metal from oxidizing again once it's already oxidized. So hopefully there, that'll serve as a little bit of a protector here. So yeah, again, to recap, this antenna Rockland 5.8 dBi, 915 megahertz. So while I have it here, I'm gonna hook it up to the Nano VNA just to check the SWR reading. Um, something I noticed with one of my other Rockland antennas is, is that it didn't have a very good SWR. And if you read Rockland's little blurb about antennas on their website, it seems like they don't fully understand antennas. They don't really understand what the DBI is and everything. So yeah, I'm gonna test this out before I actually take it over and install it. So let's do a little bit of a cut. I'll get this connected to the Nano VNA and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, so I have the antenna hooked up to the Nano VNA. I'm using this little end connector to SMA connector because the Nano VNA uses SMA ports. Uh, that connector, you can get a very inexpensive pack of those from Amazon, and it's exactly the same as the ones that they sell from Rockland directly for maybe four or five times as much. So get the cheap pack from Amazon if you're doing something like this. So when you turn this thing on, it's not super helpful. So I already did a calibration in the range that we're looking at here for Laura probably hard to tell from that screen here but um so i already calibrated it to 850 megahertz to 950 megahertz so we're going to go into that calibration so this yellow line that we're seeing that's the actual swr reading so there's this little wheel on top here so if i jog let me click out of here first if i jog over to about 914 megahertz If I get a good, so normally when I do these testings, it's on a flat surface, but not on, not on the ground. Uh, concrete can actually sort of distort the results, but this antenna is so big that I can't put it somewhere where I'm normally testing it. Um, I've also found that holding it with my hand seems to bump up the SWR a little bit, um, but I'm just going to hold it with my hand for now. We're going to take a look here. So here's the curve. So ideally we would want to be at that very bottom, but we're a little bit higher. It's not that bad. So if I, it's not gonna focus. 
Um, but the SWR here is 1.25-ish. It's fluctuating a little bit. Um, so that's really good. Um, anything below 1.5 for your SWR is considered good in terms of antenna SWR. Uh, below 2 is acceptable. And when you start getting higher than 2, that's when things get kind of hairy. And if you go higher and higher, you could end up damaging your radio. But yeah, this, this Rockland antenna actually seems like it's pretty performant and it's within spec for what Rockland's saying. I think that they say on the website just below 2.0 SWR, which is kind of a cop out. But yeah, this looks really good. Um, I'm very happy with these results. So now that we've verified that the antenna is good, everything's clean, we're going to jump ahead to the actual installation. So I'm in my parents' garage right now. Hopefully you guys can't hear the hum of this refrigerator next to me here. But if you look up there, um, on that one joist, the closest one to the top of the frame, you'll see that there's a, a, a duplex outlet up there. And on the, uh, the left outlet is the power supply for the current node that's running up there. So the node itself is actually on top of that joist. And we're going to end up replacing that, and I'll, I'll pull that down. But that node's not going to be the one that stays there. What I'm going to install is this, Station G2. Pretty cool little board. Um, the second batch, I think, of these produced just got released earlier this month. So I'm going to be putting one of those up there. It's supposed to be better for transmitting and receiving, something about a low noise floor. I, I can't particularly remember, but these are really recommended for base station units. So I figured I'm going to give it a shot. I'll put that up there. It should, um, just using the, the SMA connector on top, I'm going to have it dangle under the antenna. So it should be pretty cleanly installed up there. And yeah, well, we'll see how this uh, ultimately performs. So I'm up at the top of the ladder now, so a little shaky cam view. So here's the current node installed up here. What even is this? I forget. TTGO board. Yeah, so just one of your basic TTGO boards. So yeah, this just plugged in, dangling over here. Take this out. I'll probably put the antenna like right here, uh, but I'm not going to try to balance the camera and install that at the same time. So we're just gonna get that installed and then I'll cut to an after picture and take a look how it turned out. Okay, back up here on the ladder again now that the installation is complete. So we can see we have the Station G2 booted. It's uh, just hanging right here from underneath the antenna. And then of course we have a power cable, new power supply, um, because this uses USB power delivery, I think at like what is it, 15 volts or something? Uh, but you need a 20 watt power supply. So I have that installed. And I didn't realize this at the time. Um, so you can see here, the mount is pretty flush with the top of the joist, but if we look at the antenna, it's like the tip of it is almost right at the roof. So pretty good fit. Um, luckily that worked out because I put the antenna in after I installed the mount. So otherwise I would have had to move the mount down a little bit, but yeah, this is the installation. We're complete here. Hopefully this will be able to get some, uh, some new connections through Meshtastic and yeah, hopefully the, uh, the big selling point with this station G2 is its stability as well as its better reception. Uh, this antenna seems to be much better than the um, the existing one that I was using here. And I think this installation looks a lot cleaner than just something sitting on top of the joist. So yeah, that's it for this installation. And I hope that this thing works a little bit better, but eventually I'll uh, take a look at upgrading the node at my house and see if those two can make a connection over, I think it's uh, three and a half, four kilometers. So that'll be a cool little follow-up.